is Martin Seltz. I serve on the Executive Committee for the Hymn Society. And it's my pleasure today to welcome to introduce Pastor Esther Hanshin to present. Uh, Pastor Hanshin serves the United Methodist Church in Vienna, Austria, Vienna, and has been active in liturgical, hymnological, and ecumenical work in Europe, including for the German-speaking Methodist Hymn Book, the Regional Methodist Working Group for Liturgy, and the Ecumenical Council of Churches in Austria. Please join me in welcoming Pastor Hanshin on the topic, To Sing the World God Imagines in Many Languages. So, to sing the world God imagines in many languages gives an insight in the situation of continental European Methodism. And um, next, please. That's our program. First, an introduction. Then, a historical overview over the Methodist mission in Central Europe and Southern Europe with some insights in historical hymn books. Next, I will show you the process of doing the Gesangbuch der Evangelisch-Methodistischen Kirche in 2002. And then we have a look over several other countries where Methodists are in Middle and Southern Europe and how they sing or do music in their services. And maybe there is also time for a conclusion. Introduction, next. Singing creates community. We, re we experience this in soccer stadiums just as much as we do in church services. Listening to other voices, we perceive our fellow human beings and at the same time experience the acoustics of the room. When the singing finds its complete expression in several voices, then we embed ourselves in the sound of the harmonies. Singing the same lyrics together and following the meaning of the text brings the singers together. Physiologically, singing together also creates community. The heartbeat and breathing rate align with each other. Measurements of hormone status have shown that after a Fire rehearsal levels of the bonding hormone oxytocin are higher than before. Methodism was born in song, says the preface of the British Methodist Hymn Book of 1933. Methodists seem themselves as a singing church. Many really became aware of this during the time of the pandemic. Singing in the congregations was greatly missed. Even my small congregation in the eastern part of Vienna did not miss out on singing Christmas carols together over Zoom. Great was the jubilation when the annual conference in Austria met in mid-May 2021, and the news hit the media that the Austrian federal government had allowed singing with masks again. For Methodists, the hymns of Charles Wesley play a special role. Here they find the, the, the theology that gives shape to their faith. The lyrics of these hymns have shaped and formed Methodists in English-speaking countries. But what about Methodists who have a different native language? What do they sing in their worship services and devotions? Through what do they strengthen their faith? To what extent can the Wesleyan hymnody be translated and how much is lost in the process? In my presentation today, I would like to give an insight into the hymnal and the congregational singing of the United Methodist Church in the German-speaking countries, that means Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Together, these three three countries have the largest number of Methodists in continental Europe. In addition, I will try to give a brief overview 
of the situation of congregational singing in the different countries of the Central Conference of Central and Southern Europe. For this purpose, a survey was conducted in 2014 by the liturgy working group of this body. However, I will give only marginal insight on the United Methodist Church in the Scandinavian and Baltic countries and Eurasia. Likewise, the countries of Portugal and Italy, whose Methodist churches have become autonomous, are not considered. Next. An overview of the history of the Methodist mission in the area of Central and Southern Europe and the historical hymnals. First in France, the first Methodists from England arrived in mainland Europe via the Channel Islands at the end of the 18th century and began to work in France. Beginning in 1830, the work consolidated and spread out around Paris, in the southeast, around Nîmes, and in northwestern France. From 1840, there was a presence in Lausanne, in French-speaking Switzerland, but it was not until 1852 that a separate annual conference was formed independently of the British Methodist Church. The first Methodist hymn collections in French were produ pro produced during this time. There was not much growth, and after World War I, the question was how to continue this work. The Wesleyan Ma Mission Society in London recommended unification with other Protestant churches in France, which took place for the most part in 1939. For the most part. However, a few congregations in the South remained independent, and they joined the United Methodist Church in Switzerland and France in 2002, where other Methodist churches in Alsace have since become active. Then, next. The beginning in Germany and Switzerland in the 19th century. Wesleyan Methodists came to Germany from England and were able to gain a foothold in Württemberg around the village of Winnenden and around 1830. An emigrated German craftsman had met the Methodists in London and brought the movement to the old homeland. However, the first Methodist communities could only form a, as bubbles within the Lutheran state church, as was customary in pietism as ecclesiola in ecclesia. It was not until 1879 that the law allowed separate ecclesiastical communities to form outside the state church. The Wesleyan Methodist community spread to var various parts of Germany until 1896 and from 1870 also to Vienna. Then in 1896, they united with the Methodist Episcopal Church in Germany. The Wesleyan Methodists had first published a hymnal called Zion's Harfe, Zion's Harp, in 1863, which contained translations of Wesleyan hymns. In 1878, a second and amended edition appeared. However, many songs, especially the translated ones, do not have an indication of the author, so for some it remains unclear whether they are by Charles Wesley or not. Next. At left we see the title page of this Zion's harp, and at right the hymn of John, uh, Charles Wesley, Come let us use the grace divine. But um, it's not in the same meter in German as it is in English. Methodist missions from the USA. German emigrants were also important for the emergence of the Methodist Episcopal Church in the various small states that gradually formed into the German Empire of 1871 in the 19th century. In the course of the 19th century, there was a great wave of emigration from Germany to the USA. Many of those who emigrated came from the Reformed 
or the Lutheran or the United Churches of the small German states and joined the Methodists on the new continent. They accepted the Methodists as the church of their new homeland. Beginning in 1800, two German-speaking churches with Methodist church structures formed in the United States. One was the Evangelical Association and one was the United Brethren in Christ. In 1839, preaching was also done in German in the Methodist Episcopal Church. All three branches began sending preachers and missionaries to the old country to convince their relatives and friends of the newfound faith as lived in the Methodist tradition. Two of these three Methodist branches arrived in the German lands around 1850. The revolution of 1848 created new legal conditions in some German states so that other churches could establish themselves alongside the Protestant state churches. Next one, please. The Methodist Episcopal Church began its works on the one hand in Bremen, an important port for emigrants to the United States, and on the other hand, almost at the same time, by a returning, returning emigrant in Saxony. Gradually, congregations were formed towards the south, to Frankfurt, Heilbronn, Ludwigsburg, and until in 1856, they also began in Switzerland, in the places Zurich and Basel. The congregations were initially able to use as a hymnal the Sammlung Geistlicher Lieder, that collection of spiritual songs, which had been in use in the German-speaking congregations of America since 1839. Next. Then it appeared Zion's Psalter, that was the first Methodist hymnal created for the congregations in Germany and Switzerland. In 1897, next slide, the Gesangbuch der Bischöflichen Methodistenkirche in der Schweiz und Deutschland, translated as this hymnal for the Methodist Episcopal Church in Switzerland and Germany, was published. It was the first hymnal to publish uh, songs I learned yesterday from the gospel song tradition, uh, from the revivalist and holiness tradition, which had previously been published, next, in, um, in translation from English to German in two song collections, Frohe Botschaft in Liedern in 1875 and Evangeliumslieder in 1880. Good news in songs at the left and songs of the gospel in the middle and some collection have also both together. The songs from these, the, these collections were also accepted in other churches and communities and were considered a trademark of the Methodists until the middle of the 20th century. Next slide. The Evangelical Association was active mainly in the south of Germany and later in Switzerland, especially in Canton Bern. And later, to the end of the 19th century, from Berlin to West and East Prussia. The Evangelical Association was also initially able to use a German language hymnal from the United States. Next. In 1874, a separate hymnal was published for Germany and Switzerland. We see that the left, while the Evangelical Association in Germany published another hymnal in 1931 at the right with an appendix from 1953. In Switzerland, they continued the use to previous one and finally replaced it with a hymn book from 1952, Christen Lieder, Songs for Christians. Look at the next. So at left we see an edition 
for the hymn book of the Evangelical Association for Switzerland, and it's a new one with scores. So the previous for Germany and Switzerland was only with texts, but the Swiss people liked more to sing in four parts, and they need for that the scores. And at right, we see this Christen leader, and the page is in a special section. You only need to have it in Switzerland for a special federal holiday for Thanksgiving, Buse, penitence, penitence and praying. So that's a special Swiss holiday. And there is also a problematic when you use uh, when you used a hymnal in Switzerland and Germany in the 19th century, Germans would like to uh, give prayers for the king, and that was not possible in Switzerland because they had a very strong democratic tradition. Next, please. The United Brethren in Christ, uh, Christ did not begin their work until 1869 in the Franconian area in Germany. When the interest of the mother church in the US for the congregations in Germany diminished around 1900, they joined the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1905. In the US, the United Brethren in Christ merged with the Evangelical Association and formed in 1946 the Evangelical United Brethren Church. The United Brethren in Christ do not seem to have published a hymnal of their own for the congregations in Germany. And now a look ahead once again. The church union in 1968. While the Methodist Episcopal Church gradually expanded its works to other language areas in Europe, the congregations of the Evangelical Association remained limited to the German language areas in Germany and Switzerland, as well as some congregations in Alsace, an area which, depending on the historical situation, once belonged to Germany and then again to France. The Evangelical Association and the Methodist Church united in 1968 to form the United Methodist Church, which is called in German-speaking areas Evangelisch Methodistische Kirche. So, historically, we go to the next stop and to the next. Uh, yeah. That's the same United Methodist Church as we have here. Yes, that's the same United Methodist Church. So, we go to other areas in Eastern Europe until the First World War where Methodist missionaries worked. From Vienna, where we had um, uh, from 1860 on, a Methodist uh, church, there were contacts within the Austro-Hungarian Austro Empire around 1900 to Bacca, a German-speaking area or a mixed-speaking area with quite a lot German population now in north of Serbia. And after Second World War, all these Germans had to leave their places. Since there were also Hungarians in this area, church services were also held in that language, and so work was done not only among German speakers in Hungary, but also among Magyars, the Hungarian-speaking population. And as early as 1856, the Methodist Episcopal Church became active in the Ottoman Empire along with the American Board of Congregationalists. Among the Bulgarians, congregations were formed and schools were established. Membership remained low for the time being, as many, while happy to attend Methodist meetings, remained loyal to the Orthodox Church. And now, an overview uh, over the period between First and Second World War. First, new freedom. The end of the World War I brought 
many political changes, especially in the Central and Eastern European region after the Balkan Wars and the disintegration of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In addition, the peace treaty of Saint-Germain-en-Laye in 1920 brought a new religious freedom also for non-state churches. To alleviate the hardship after World War I, considerable relief efforts were launched from the Methodist churches of the United States, Switzerland, and the Scandinavian countries, especially to save children from starvation. Also something happened after 1920, just at the bottom. In Belgium, Poland, and Czechoslovakia, three countries strongly influenced by Catholicism were starting points for the mission of the Methodist Episcopal Church South, which united with the Methodist Episcopal Church to form the Methodist Church in 1939. This union was accomplished in the United States, but had no effect in Europe for the time being due to the outbreak of World War II. Next. Establishment of central conferences. The Methodist Episcopal Church established three central conferences in Europe during the interwar period. Northern Europe for the Scandinavian countries and the Baltic states. Central Europe with Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, and initially, initiate, initially the work in the Balkan states, Yugoslavia and Bulgaria, and a central conference for Southern Europe with France, Spain, Italy, North Africa, and from 19. 28, also Yugoslavia and Bulgaria. So these two countries changed. Important from the point of view of church law was the possibility for the central conferences to adapt the book of discipline and the liturgy for their circumstances in order to meet the legal and ecclesiastical situation in the respective countries. Next. During the First World War, the desire for a new hymnal arose in the congregations in Germany. The German Methodists were in a conflict of identity as a church with American roots in Germany due to the First World War. This can be seen in the preface where it is mentioned that one liked to consider again more the Schutz und Trutzlied. I do not have any translation. Yes, um, protest, protection and protest. Uh, they called that the type of Reformation time, hymns from the Reformation time. So they considered more again these Reformation hymns, whereas the English songs, it was called in the preface English, should be limited. When the two German conferences, the Northern Conference and the Southern Germany Conference, presented their draft for a new hymnal, hymnal to the Central Conference in 1925, it was rejected by the bishop in charge, John Louis Nielsen. He demanded that the wishes and hymn traditions from the annual conference of Switzerland also be taken into account. Thus, a committee was appointed with Swiss participation. The hymnal now bore the somewhat awkward title, Gesangbuch der Bischöflichen Methodistenkirche für die Gemeinden Deutscher Zungen in Europa. That means hymnal of the Methodist Episcopal Church for the Congregation of German Tongue in Europe. Thus, it was consciously no longer a hymnal for Germany alone. It also came into use in congregations in Switzerland, Alsace, that part of France, uh, with the German-speaking population, in Austria, in Hungary, and in northern Yugoslavia. At the right side, there is the only one hymn 
um, they publi published in this hymn book that was written by Huldrich Zwingli, the reformator of Zurich. So that is the Swiss protest to have also a hymn <laughs> of their tradition in it. And there are more hymns you can show. It's the influence of this be participated as Swiss persons. Next. In 1932, the Central Conference of Southern Europe has to be dissolved and for political reasons, Germany became its own Central Conference in 1936. In 1938, Austria was annexed to Hitler's Germany and thus the Methodist Conference has also, was also incorporated into Germany. Nobody protested then. As a result of the Second World War, the German-speaking population was expelled from the countries of Eastern and Central Europe, so they came a lot of refugees to the Austrian and Germany, uh, to Austria and Germany. There was also a great deal of resettlement in Poland. Much had to be rebuilt, and just as was after the First World War, there were again considerable relief efforts from US, Scandinavia, and Switzerland. Next, we go to the situation after 1945. We see how the central conferences was new arranged. The Northern European Central Conference lost its contacts in the Baltic states. The Methodist churches in Latvia and Lithuania they were founded in the interwar period, could not continue to exist under Soviet rule. Only in Estonia could the church, very isolated and with very few contacts, survived the Soviet period. Germany built an own central conference and was divided into the Federal Republic and the German, German Democratic Republic until 1989. Bishop Wunderlich led the church until 1968, which helped the mission as he came from East Germany and could thus travel beyond the Iron Curtain. After that, after 1968, a separate central conference had to be established uh, uh, for the GDR and its own bishop elected. And what's about the rest? The rest built it the Central Conference of Central and Southern Europe. The question was what to do with the remaining Methodist churches and missions in Central Europe. From 1954 on, they formed the Central Conference of Central, Central and Southern Europe with a bishop based in Zurich, Switzerland. His Episcopal territory included from the old Central Conference, Switzerland, Austria and Hungary. From the Southern Central Conference, France, North Africa, Yugoslavia. Bulgaria was not able, uh, the bishop was never able to uh, visit and to overview the ministry there. Contacts were, to Bulgaria were maintained only through laymen and visits by relatives whose relatives had married to in, into Bulgaria. And from the Medo mission of the Methodist Episcopal South, Belgium, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. So that built it the Central Conference of Central and Southern Europe. The two bishops, Swiss men, who were active during this period were often unable to travel for many years to the areas they were responsible for overseeing. Thanks to Switzerland's neutrality, however, they were more likely be to succeed in obtaining visas for the countries behind the Iron Curtain than, for example, um, Germans. So, in this period, the next hymnal comes, and the next a common German language hymnal after the Church Union of 1968. The union of the Methodist Church and the Evangelical Association in 1968 led to a new hymnal for the German-speaking congregation, which was published in 1969. 
The Gesangbuch der Evangelisch-Methodistischen Kirche, Hymnal of the United Methodist Church, brought together three hymnals. Gesangbuch der Bischöflichen Methodistenkirche für die Gemeinden Deutscher Zungen in Europa, which dates from 1926, or it came in use in 1929. And after the uh, Second World War, it was reprinted with a different title page. Next. So up we see, uh, up left we see Gesangbuch der Methodistenkirche of the Episcopal Tradition. Then at right, once again, Gesangbuch der Evangelischen Gemeinschaft from 1931. That was for Germany, for the Evangelical Association. Down at left, Christenlieder 1952 for the Evangelical Association in Switzerland and write that was, is the title page of the hymn book in 90, uh, that was published in 1969. The edition for the German Democratic Republic did not appear until 1970, because three hymns had to be exchanged and replaced by other hymns due to the objection of state authorities. In this hymnals, in this hymnal, there were only six hymns by Charles Wesley, next. But a some of the uh, other hymns from the 19th century were collected in a special section just at the end of the hymn book. And uh, the title was Aus der Väter Tage, from the days of the All Fathers. Next. Now you have this map you, I think, longed you. Changes after 1989 and recent developments. With the political changes that followed the fall of the Iron Curtain, there were renewed changes in the European Central Conferences of the United Methodist Church. First, we go to the blue part. The Scandinavian and Baltic states were Methodist churches have been re-established in Latvia and Lithuania, together with Methodist churches in countries of the former Soviet Union. They now form a central conference for Northern Europe and Eurasia. Two bishops supervise, one over Northern Europe and the Baltic countries with six annual conferences in nine countries, and one bishop over the Russian Federation and other former Commonwealth of Independent States countries with four annual conferences in six countries. But we have newer changes. Again, they are not shown on this map. In Sweden, the Methodist Church merged with two other churches and only two congregations rested. They now belong to the Swedish-speaking Provisional Annual Conference in Finland. And with the beginning of the war in Ukraine in February uh, 24, in 2022, there was a new change. Already for some time before that, the bishop from Russia was not able to visit the parishes in Ukraine. At the end of April 2022, the bishop of Northern Europe, Baltic, took over the supervision of the congregations in Ukraine and Moldova. You see in orange, Ukraine and between Uca Ukraine and Romania, this small part of Mold Moldova. The situation in Germany, green. The two central conferences in West and East united under one bishop in 1992. Considerations to reorganize the Episcopal areas together with Central and Southern Europe were not pursued at that time. The scars left by World War II and the differences in size made reorganization, in, made reorganization impossible. Methodists in Germany would always have had an overwhelming majority. Today, there are about 45,000 Methodists in Germany in three annual conferences. And the red part is what builds Central and Southern Europe, but also with some changes. I think every year 
in the bishop's office, they had to renew <laughs> the map. Within the Central and, uh, Central and Southern Europe Central Conference, new countries and new, new churches formed after 1989. This Central Conference, until recently, include 14 countries organized into seven annual conferences with a total of about 20,000 members worshiping in 20 different languages. So you see the problem. For example, the Czech Republic and Slovakia form two countries now, but they are still united in one annual conference. Or due to the breakup of Yugoslavia, the congregations in the north are now in Serbia, and those who were during Yugoslavia in the south are now in the country called nowadays North Macedonia. Here on the map still, uh, no, it's North Macedonia, just in the bottom. And they are still one annual conference newly with also some congregations in Albania. But there are a lot of political tensions between Albania and Macedonia. Uh, so, also in Bulgaria after 1992, it was possible to uh, rebuild the church again. And for almost 10 years, three congregations in Romania have also joined the Methodist connection. But we have recent new developments. There are other reasons for the separation of Bulgaria from the Central Conference of Middle and Southern Europe. The expected expected separation within the Methodist Uni United Methodist Church due to the different positions of, on social ethical questions was anticipated and found its resolution on April 1st in 2022. However, this action is also related to a conflict of former and current leadership. So we lost the Bulgarian annual conference and maybe, or it's sure that we also lose the congregations in Romania. They will also leave the United Methodist Church. So you have uh, an overview over the different countries and languages in Europe. The historical part is done. Gratulations. <laughs> Next, we have a look on the hymn book of the United Methodist Church in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, produced in 2002. Um, and you see on the front, not cross and flame, because after the union in 1968, we use in the Central Conference of Middle and South, uh, of Central and Southern Europe, uh, um, cross on the globe, we call it. And you will see that this also for other hymnals something. So the preparations for this hymn book. In the 1969 Gesangbuch der Evangelisch Methodistischen Kirche brought together three traditions of hymnals. It followed in the structure the Lutheran tradition and began with the hymns for the church year. This was one of the reasons that this hymnal was very unpopular in the Swiss congregations, which are strongly reformed, not um, as church, but they are, uh, especially with regard to worship, they are well reformed. And uh, for them, it was also too strong. This hymn book from 1969, it was too, st too strongly influenced by Reformation hymns and contained, I just mentioned, only six hymns of Charles Wesley from not so important times of uh, the church year. But when there was a rediscovery of John's, John Wesley's theology and Charles Wesley's hymns, beginning in the mid-1980s, partly in connection with the two thousand. Uh, 200th anniversary of the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1984, some people began to translate additional hymns by Charles Wesley. These appeared together with other newer hymns in an appendix under the title Leben und Loben, Live and Praise in 1987. 
It saw very quickly that especially the newly translated hymns of Charles Wesley were popular in the congregation and were sung with pleasure, as if people had been waiting for a long time to be able to sing their own theology. Now the process, process of formation. Since after 1989, the annual conference in Germany, at that time still four conferences, belonged to one central conference, but the annual conferences in Switzerland and Austria belonged to another central conference. So good coordination and agreement were needed between the two responsible bishops. The initiative for a new hymnal came from Germany. In Switzerland, there was some skepticism due to the bad experiences with the previous hymnal. There was also the question of how to meet the need for songs in Swiss dialect. So the next problem we have with language is, in 1995, a first group of five people, one from Switzerland, four from Germany, was formed to create a concept. In the course of 1996, each annual conference in Germany and Switzerland elected three people for a hymn committee to be formed. Austria, smaller, sent one person. In addition, one person each was delegated also from uh, German children's and youth work, from the Brass Band Association in Germany, they are quite strong, and the publishing house. Finally, a 21st person was added in the form of the Bishop of the Central Conference of Germany. Next. So, the work began in January 1997, and in semi-annual meetings, the existing 1969 hymnal and the appendix from 1987 were first reviewed to determine which songs could be adopted. Next. You see the hymnal in a red color. In the middle, this appendix for the West, and at the left, in blue, for East Germany. Because in the hymnal from 1969, three hymns had to be replaced. They put one of the hymns we had in Leben und Loben just in 1970 to the hymnal. So they had also a free place in <laughs> in Leben und Loben in blue. But that we only um, saw when the hymn committee was together and we sang under the same number different hymns. So the next step was a review of other hymnals. And important here were the hymnals of the dominant national churches in Germany, Switzerland and Austria with all regional parts and appendices. So, next. We see at left the Evangelisch Gesangbuch of Württemberg, that was because there are Methodists are strong in the southern part of Germany, that was an important one. The next blue one is also the same, but from Austria with another appendix. Then the red Gottes, Gotteslob is the Catholic hymn book for Germany and Austria. And we have once again a special Swiss tradition built with the reformiertes Gesangbuch, evangelisch reformiertes Gesangbuch in red and katholisches Gesangbuch in blue. We will afterwards have an example why does it makes, made a lot of problems the uh, different tradition in Germany and Austria against Switzerland. We also look through next to the United Methodist Hymnal from 1989 and Methodist and Psalms from 1983 of the Methodist Church from Great Britain. And we look through for Methodist songs that could be translated. And next we look through to other hymn books of non-state churches. So the Baptists and the others are from several groups. It's too difficult to explain. <laughs> Next. And we look through children's, youth, and ecumenical hymns. Next. 
So we have one hymn less than the Japanese Baptist hymnal. <laughs> we have only 681. Some of them are bilingual or multilingual. And in the addition, there are um, 37 psalms and 11 biblical readings, 34 prayers, um, five blessings, three creeds, also the social creed of the United Methodist Church. And new compared to previous hymnals, four liturgies for the Lord's Supper and the liturgy for the renewal of the covenant with God. And finally, we had also 43 pictures, images have been included. Next, we see one from African tradition. So next slide. Some hymns have you seen by the number a small Ö. Ö indicates ecumenical version as the German word for ecumene starts with Ö. Since 1969, an ecumenical group has been working in the German-speaking world on text and melody versions of hymns for which there is a joint responsibility. Due to controversies between Protestant and Catholic Christians in the time of the Reformation and Counter-Reformation, different versions of hymns have developed. These had to be brought together again in order to be able to sing together with one voice. Unfortunately, Switzerland has often gone its own way in this respect so that different ecumenical hymn versions were established in Switzerland than in German. However, since the Methodist hymnal is valid for all three countries, it was always had to be decided anew which tradition to follow. So we see uh, the hymn, The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, has ended. In the Methodist hymnal, we took the German version, and you see in the Reformed hymn book of Switzerland, Ö is in parenthesis, but it has a plus. That means that's a common version between Reformed and Catholics in Switzerland. So you have the Swiss version, that's the plus. <laughs> and that what was changed is the second stanza, the translation of the second stanza. Die Erde rollt dem Tag entgegen, wir ruhen aus in dieser Nacht, in this night. And in Switzerland they sing, wir ruhen aus in deiner Hut, in your protection. And then, uh, because it's a word of rhyme, you have to choose another rhyme. So, the hymn translations from English and American English are to be seen as an innovation of this hymnal. There are now 21 hymns by Charles Wesley in contemporary translation. Um, I think we take the next. Yeah. 19 hymns and songs from the United Methodist Hymnal and 10 from Hymns and Psalms were have been newly translated or adopted in present translations. Another 17 translations from various languages come from Global Praise, an initiative of the Global Methodist oh, General Board of Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church in 1990. And 44 songs have been adopted in German translations from other available song collections in the German-speaking area, as we heard, for example, this morning from Swain Ellingson. From the field of English language worship music, nine songs have been adopted, and from the Tese songs, 14. Finally, 15 translations of hymns from the holiness and the revival movement or gospel songs should be mentioned, which date back to the 19th century. They are sung so often that they are no longer recognized as translations. Thus, a little less than a quarter of the songs in the hymnal do not originate in the German-speaking world. Therefore, it is characterized by its internationality. Next, accompanying materials. 
uh, they include an instrumental book, and it was very important for the brass bands because they are the main receivers of this book. Then next, we produced also two books to explain the pictures. That is Voller Hoffnung, Full of Hope, and uh, one book that introduces mainly newer songs, Full of Freude, Full of Joy. Next. We produced a loose leaf collection that provides background information on individual songs and further ideas for organi organizing worship services with individual songs. And there was also a CD, Lieder in Hülle und Fülle, Songs in Abundance, but it's in, unfortunately out of print. Next. I started on the Austrian United Methodist website um, some song reflections online in which YouTube videos are also incorporated. And I try so to um, give some information on hymns because uh, this loose leaf collection is also out of print and so younger people have the possibility to find things. How it was recepted, this hymn book. While in Germany and Austria the hymnal has been well accepted and widely received in the congregations, the situation in Switzerland was clearly different. More than half of the congregations do not sing from the hymnal, but project the songs on the wall. The, so the song material therefore comes from other sources, which are only partly selected and answered for by the church as a whole. But through that, there is the possibility to use songs in the Swiss dialect. And the Swiss are happy about. So, have a look to the rest of Europe. Next, please. We go back to our map. So far, I have presented mainly the situation of the German-speaking Methodists, who make up a large part of the continental European Methodists with the three countries, Germany, with about 45,000 members, Switzerland, about 5,000 members, and Austria, about 700 members. In addition, I now give an overview of the other countries of the Central and Southern European Conference. During the conference meeting, the conference language has gradually changed from German to English, I think 10 years ago, since young people in the Eastern European countries tend to learn English rather than German. But how can songs be sung at joint meetings when additional people are present who speak neither the one nor the other lang conference language? So for example, by women's meetings. Are there even common songs that can be sung? And what does worship singing look like in the respective countries? In a survey, uh, the liturgy working group of the Central Conference of Central and Southern Europe made a survey on worship in the summer of 2014. The aim was to perceive the diversity of worship services and to derive from this a simple form of worship that maps what happens in four steps. Arrive, listen, share, move on. Of the approximately 300 congregations of the Central Conference of Central and Southern Europe, 200 responded, so it's two-thirds. This survey was also carried out in Germany. There, out of 500 congregations, there were 250 responses, so the half part. Some parts of the survey also deal with the situation of hymnals, worship singing, and musical accompaniments. One thing emerged across all countries, larger congregations are more likely to sing songs projected on the wall, while smaller congregations are more likely to sing from a book. Not all countries have a Methodist hymnal. There, people tend to make to do, uh, make to, there, people tend to make do with non-Methodist songbooks or projected songs. Now, however, an insight into the individual countries and their musical situation, especially in the countries of former Eastern 
countries, the membership figures mentioned are often lower than the church service attendance. Due to the situation of communism, where the confession to a Christian church could also mean the loss of the job, there is, a still, there is still a reluctance to be a member of a church in these countries. France, big country but few congregations. Together with Switzerland, France, and a few congregations in North Africa, we do not see in that part, forms an annual conference that is bilingual in German and French. In addition to the 17 congregations in France with about 1,000 members, there are also four French-speaking congregations in Switzerland. These congregations in particular include a considerable number of migrants from French-speaking Africa. Next. There is no Methodist hymnal in French. One helps oneself with arc-en-ciel, this means rainbow, and that's a hymn book of the Reformed Church in France. In 2006, with the support of General Board of Global Ministries, the collection Mille Voix pour te chanter, A Thousand Tongues to Sing, was created. It was compiled by individuals from United States, France, French-speaking Switzerland, and French-speaking Sub-Saharan Africa, the countries Congo, Cameroon, and Côte d'Ivoire. Among the 43 song numbers are 11 translations by Charles Wesley, some older from this old French, French tradition, some newer, and there are new compositions by French-speaking authors and French translations of international songs. And uh, my colleague in Lausanne, she's a native US, I think she was once fellow uh, Lovelace scholar, um, she found a Canadian French-speaking hymnal that has uh, uh, quite a lot of numbers also used in English, and she's very happy about. North Africa. Two congregations participated in the survey located in university towns on the northern coast of Algeria and composed mainly of students from sub-Saharan Africa. They like to sing songs from their homeland and therefore, in addition to French and the national language Arabic, they also sing in Swahili or Lingala. There is no information about their services, songs, and music of the congregations located in the Kabil Mountain, that's a Berber region, so it's the former population before the Arabs came in Algeria. So for them, it, I think it was too dangerous to join this survey. Next. Huh? Yeah, we go back now to the Slavic-speaking countries. From Poland, comparatively few congregations, only 11 out of 37, with about 2,000 members in total part participated in the survey. So we have from Poland not so a representative picture. However, the existing hymnal seems to be well used and the majority sings from it. There are organs or other keyboard instruments to accompany the songs. If no organist is available, the songs are also accompanied by guitar. So one thing is important to know, we have no uh, musicians paid by the church in all the countries. So music is something uh, people are doing, some of them very good, and some of them not so. Czech Republic. The 22 congregations in the Czech Republic with about 900 church members use a Methodist hymnal or project the songs in about equal parts, whereby the projected songs increasingly, increasingly replace the hymnal or own song collections are compiled. For song accompaniments, the guitar is often used and where songs are projected, a band is also popular. There are only a few organs. Slovakia, for 13 congregations with about 250 members in Slovakia, the situation is similar to that in the Czech Republic. However, there are three congregations here that sing without musical accompaniment. I suppose that could be um, uh, Roma congregations uh, uh, from gypsies. 
same in Hungary. In Hungary, participation in the survey was again somewhat lower. Only half of the 28 congregations with a total number of 500 members participated. The majority of these say that the sing, they sing from the hymnal published in 2004. Next. And you see it looks like the German one. <laughs> And uh, I show you one of the hymns. They have quite a, a, a several hymns from Finland because the Finnish language and the Hungarian language have some connections with each other. Uh, the Hungarian hymn book contains 11 texts by Charles Wesley. Since there is a strong reformed church in Hungary, several psalms in the Geneva tradition have also been adopted. And the gospel hymns of the 19th century are also well represented, as well as many translations of German chorals from the time of the Reformation and after. There are, there are some Roma gypsy congregations in Hungary. They have their own musical tradition, and in many cases they sing their song by heart, because they cannot read. A common tradition to sing with ethnic Hungarians is most likely to be found in the songs of the praise and worship section, which are translated in, into Hungarian. I tried to get a video. I can show you on my computer over Facebook, and it's very astonishing when you hear some uh, congregational music in gypsy sound. Next. The services in the 14 congregations of Serbia with about 400 members are only in the northern part and they are celebrated in three languages. The area is, there is affected by a great migration out of the country. The only, there is one Hungarian speaking congregation, they can use the Hungarian hymnal. The Slovak-speaking congregations have also a hymnal available. Next. Sionske Piesne. Next. And you see uh, uh, the author of a lot of these hymns is, uh, there are two sisters, Rojova, and they have produced a lot of hymns in Slovakian language but they are not Methodists from origin. And the Serbian-speaking congregations have to make do with their own song collections or protected songs. They have no Serbian-speaking hymnal. Or they have one from 1939. It's a little bit too old. In some congregations, the service is celebrated bilingually in Serbian and Slovak, so there is constant translation in the service. So the survey also showed that in 27% of the congregation in Central and Southern Europe, there is a translation during the worship. Organs tend to be used in Slovak congregation while Serbian congregations are accompanied by guitar or keyboard. Next, North Macedonia. The 11 co congregations in North Macedonia with about 2,000 members sing fairly uniformly from the hymnal. This had to be reprinted in 2017 after more than 40 years. Next. And we see once again the cross on the globe. That is the hymn book. It's in uh, Kyrillic letters I cannot read. And there is nothing showed who, from whom are the hymns. So, um, I cannot say very much about this hymn book. But um, the youth hymn book, it looks like the German youth hymn book. Um, they have music, so uh, you can see um, this is the part of praise and worship music they have in the youth songbook from 2014. Uh, next is Albania. At the time of the survey in 2014, there were two congregations in uh, Albania and the third was in the process to being planted. Now there are six congregations with about 200 members. 
The church is under construction. A first collection of songs is already printed in Albanian. The songs are accompanied by keyboard and guitar. The church offers extra music courses for young people in order to attract young people to take over musical tasks in the congregations. Romania. The three congregations in Romania did, did not participate in the survey. They have only been in existence for a few years. According to, to oral information, their music style is oriented towards praise and worship. Bulgaria, next. The Bulgarian hymnal is very outdated and therefore hardly in use anymore at most in smaller con uh, congregations in the rural parts. It contains many translated hymns from the 19th century. The gospel songs you see here. Da, 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 da. So yesterday I learned the Japanese wedding hymn. The bigger churches project the songs that come from the praise and worship section. The, in two large churches in Sofia and Varna, there are pipe organs, otherwise in keyboard and guitars dominate for song accompaniment. In two churches, two drum instruments are used, the tarambuka or tarbuka and the tambourine. In Bulgaria, there is, among others, a Turkish-speaking Roma congregation whose musical style has a distinctly Middle Eastern touch. Services are also celebrated in Armenian language and, of course, in Bulgarian. And they have 20 churches. Next. Concluding thoughts. Having a common hymnal which has songs that unite the congregations is impossible in Central and Southern European Central Conference because of the diversity of languages. Even to follow a common liturgy leads to considerable difficulties because the traditions have developed very differently. Often they are shaped by the denominational background of the de dominant church in the respective country. So in Switzerland, there is a strong orientation towards the reformed worship tradition. In Poland and Austria, influences of the Catholic tradition are most teasable. In recent years, individual liturgies have been translated into the local language in some countries. For example, in Czech Republic, they have translated the entire book of worship of the United Methodist Church. Also, some parts are translated in Poland, in Hungary, and in Bulgaria. In the German-speaking countries, where the greatest diversity in liturgical forms has developed due to the size of the church and the historically different streams of tradition that have flowed together, there are independent developments with regard to worship liturgies. If one looks at the at a common possibility to sing, it is most likely to be found in the hymns of the 19th century. They are translated in all the languages and are common to all. Translations of the hymns of Charles Wesley have become available recently and have yet to be made known. Especially songs from the area of praise and worship are suitable for translation since their texts are shorter and not necessarily bound to a verse form. There is a great willingness of the young generation to use these songs for themselves. In many cases, these songs are already translated in the respective countries because this has already been done in other denominations. And at last, Finally, I would like to mention two publications that offer hymns and songs in many European languages. We see at the left, Colors of Grace, a joint publication of the IAH and the Community of Protestant Churches in Europe. It was published for their 2006 assembly in Budapest. Here are 157 hymns and songs available in 19 European and two other languages. In this songbook, there are five hymns by Charles Wesley. The hymns of the 19th century are missing in Colors of Grace. As a supplement, we made Singing Grace, 
a collection of 46 songs um, in, was created in 2010 for joint singing at the European Methodist Historical Meeting. On the one hand, it contains songs that have already been published in global praise publications. On the other hand, other translations of Wesley hymns in European languages were collected. For example, all oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, you are able to sing in 16 languages. So, that was my introduction in many languages. Thank you for your attention. We have some minutes more. Come here. I can take this one out, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, um, we are pretty much at time, but we might have, uh, there's one question in the chat that I found, and uh, what, what a fascinating, uh, commanding sweep of the history of not, <laughs> not just the, the church and, and its uh, song, but the Many of us don't even know that much about all of the history that you trace, so thank you very much for that. Um, there's one question in the chat, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that one from uh, Karin. The hymnal in Swiss dialect still intrigues me. How did the compilers deal with the written dialect? Within Switzerland's geographically small area, are there not variances in the dialect? Does an official written Swiss dialect even exist? Um, nein, ich, ich antworte auf Deutsch. <lacht> Danke, Anthony. So, es gibt kein ähm, Gesangbuch äh, in Schweizerdeutsch. There's no hymnal in Swiss German. Sie, äh, als Ergänzung zum Gesangbuch, das ich vorgestellt habe, wurde, wurden ähm, Lieder auf Folie produziert. So, as a supplement to the hymnal that I introduced, uh, hymns were produced in uh, loose leaf. Um zu projizieren, also mit Overhead. Oh, for overhead projection. Und dann später natürlich für den Beamer. For the what? Beamer. Video projector. Oh, okay. For the video projector. <laughs> yeah, I'm not helpful. Even kind of helpful. Um, das Problem besteht wirklich daraus, dass es mehrere dominierende Schweizer Dialekte gibt, aber die Methodisten sind nicht überall in der Schweiz. Das heißt, man kann sich auf Baseldeutsch, Zürichdeutsch und Berndeutsch konzentrieren. Yeah, the problem is that there are many different dialects throughout Switzerland, but the Methodists are not represented in every region, so if they concentrate on the dialects of the three main cities that you heard, it works okay. That was Basel, Bern, and Zurich. Und oft wird auch so ein Gemisch von Dialekt genommen für diese Lieder, damit der Reim irgendwie ausgeht oder so. And sometimes they use kind of a mixture of the various dialects so that the rhyming patterns come together. In den methodistischen Gemeinden hat man zusätzlich das Problem, dass ja die Pastoren herumversetzt werden und wenn ein Pastor aus Basel äh, Dienst tut in Bern, dann ändert sich auch sein Dialekt und dann gibt es ein furchtbares Gemisch. The other problem is that pastors are moved around. So if a pastor is replaced and he has to go from Basel to Bern, then uh, you have confusion. Also das sage ich, ich, ich bin in der Schweiz aufgewachsen und kenne dieses Problem, bin aber vor gut 20 Jahren nach Österreich gegangen, weil ich diese ganze Dialektdiskussion nicht mitmachen wollte. Uh, I know the problem well because I grew up in Switzerland, but I have been in Austria for 20 years, so this problem doesn't concern me the same way. So, so I flew this problem. <laughs> Flat. Flat. <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. Or do we need to close? Oh, we, we can 
take maybe one more question if you have one. <laughs> I'm curious how you put Charles Wesley into German because, um, you know, the content is so wonderful. It's so biblical and theologically correct and all of that. But when I think of love divine or lo, he comes, the beauty of it is not just what it says, but the English quality. Does that come across in German? Or when you look at our hymnals, you say, oh, that's Wesley. How, how does that work? So um, you lose the half of the hymn when you translate it. And uh, the problem is that German needs always more syllables and uh, syllables. And the problem is that um, the, in English you have a lot of one syllable words. And in German you need almost two or three syllables to, syllables to say anything. <laughs> So uh, you lose half of the text, and we have one or two hymns also in English. So one uh, or for a thousand tongues to sing, we sing also in English. Um, and but most in Germany, people are not able to speak English enough to understand also the the, the English hymns. So we need always the the. Uh, the German, so it was a main decision of the hymn committee to have every hymn available in German. And that made problems <laughs> for some <laughs> Taizé songs we had. <laughs> okay. The problem is that's in Deutsch is confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's express our thanks once again to Pastor Hanshi.